since debuting on SmackDown in August two years ago, my guest at this time has gone on to defeat some of the biggest names in the business, including winning the United States Championship and the WWE Tag Team Championship. He claims to be the highest paid athlete on SmackDown. He claims to be better than you. He is Montel Vontavious Porter, MVP. Hello, Kirsty. Hi, MVP. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well, and you? I'm very good, thanks. Um, it was your second visit out here to New Zealand last week. Did you get much of a chance to look around this time? Unfortunately not. No, I never get much of a chance to look around because our, our schedule is so rigorous. We're in and out. Uh, but I did have an opportunity to uh, uh, meet with the Auckland Warriors and by chance happened to run into some of the All Blacks and got around uh, Auckland a bit. So that was cool. Cool. How did you find holding the VIP lounge in Auckland with Butch Miller? Outstanding. Yeah? <laughs> Absolutely outstanding. Uh, it's one of those, you know, in, <clears throat> excuse me, here, uh, being in the WWE and, and being a, a lifelong fan, you know, there are times when uh, I have these surrealistic moments where I'm standing in the ring with, with two WWE greats, Tony Gurria and, and Bushwhacker Butch, and, and just, uh, it was surrealistic. It was absolutely breathtaking. How do you, uh, what did you think of New Zealand fans? How do they compare with other international fans? Uh, they were just full of energy, and, and, and I guess because we only make it to New Zealand once a year, they uh, they were very hungry, and I guess you know the anticipation and excitement of seeing us just allows them to be so loud and and and, and over the top. So they, uh, you know, the U.S. fans they're great, and, and fans in other places are are outstanding. But I guess because we only get to New Zealand, you know, once a year, it uh it it allows them to uh, to I guess be that much more excited about our arrival. Yeah, absolutely. So what first got you into wrestling? Is it something that you'd always wanted to do? No, as a matter of fact, uh, I stumbled into wrestling, if you will. Uh, I was always a fan, but uh, it was when I was in prison, towards the end of my sentence, I was at a work release center, and I met a correctional officer who was an independent wrestler, and he would bring in you know, videotapes of, of independent shows and title belts, and you know, we'd watch them, and he and I would strike up conversations about wrestling and I would always ask him, you know, questions about, you know, the moves and yeah, I just wanted to be, I wanted to know the behind the scenes things, if you will. And he was uh, in the process of starting up his own independent promotion and asked me if I'd be interested in learning how to wrestle. And I knew that I was getting out of prison soon and I was going to need something to, uh, to keep me out of trouble and uh, took him up on his offer to train me. And, well, since you bring it up, um, your prison sentence, do you think that it has done that? You know, wrestling has helped you to you know, <laughs> keep out of trouble? Wrestling saved my life. Yeah. Because if it hadn't been for professional wrestling, I most certainly would have gone back to engaging in some sort of criminal behavior. So I probably would be back in prison for life or dead. Wow. Did you have um, any concerns early on when you first debuted for WWE about the look of the MVP character, you know, response to the Power Ranger chants, things like that? Oh, absolutely. The, uh, <laughs> I hated, absolutely <laughs> aboard that first outfit. It was nothing like what I had designed. Uh, the, the concept was supposed to be Under Armour, and what I got was Star Trek. <laughs> I, I was. I actually went to Mr. McMahon and asked if I could cut the sleeves off or if, if I could do something to change it. And he said, no, no, that's it. He, his exact words to me are, MVP's ego is going to make that work. And he was right. I was going to say, he was, he was absolutely right. But so, since then, <laughs> if you notice, the evolution of the outfit Definitely. has been a little yep. more towards what I want and even now I'm working on even newer designs to, to keep oh, wow. more in, in, in tune with the the Under Armour and Nike dry fit type theme. Cool. Well, we're looking forward to seeing that. Um, take us back to the Inferno match with Kane. How scary was that? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was uh, unnerving to say the least. You're in a wrestling ring and surrounded by uh, 
I, I would have to say those flames, when they sh when they would shoot up, they'd shoot up to probably 10 feet or something like that. And uh, standing in with Kane, who's about 320 pounds, mm -hmm. maybe 6'10", I mean, when you talk about frying pan into the fire, mm -hmm. there you go, quite literally. Yeah. Um, and once, uh, when the flames, I mean, it was hot to begin with and uh, difficult to breathe because of the heat. But I was going to ask, does the oxygen get sucked out of the ring? Oh, yeah. And yeah. at one point, it was interesting, uh, I w Kane knocked me down, and as uh, I was close to the edge of the ring, and the gas that ignites the flames, uh, I, was, I happened to be taking a deep breath right as the uh, the flames were being uh, pumped and oh now pumped. you got a lungful a lungful of gas oh. so for you know for a few minutes there I was like I couldn't breathe at all and uh, I had to not only fight for breath I had to fight Kane off as well yeah so, uh, it was I, I came close to panicking for a second but was able to make it out the other side yeah you won your first WWE title the United States Championship defeating Chris Benoit after you had had a series of matches how did the Chris Benoit tragedy affect you? Uh, deeply, mm -hmm. very deeply. Um, it's uh, an absolutely abhorrent tragedy, but the uh, I, I don't even have the words to, to express how shocking and, and, and deeply disturbing the, the whole ordeal was. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've gone from strength to strength since then. Um, what's it been like working with Mike Hardy, both as tag team partner and as rivals for the United States Championship? Uh, it, it's been, it, 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 it's funny. I, I, I'm never at a loss for words, but there are times <laughs> when, uh, when reflecting on my career up to this point, are, uh, I, it's just overwhelming because I think about the fact that uh, when, <clears throat> you know, I, I even joked with Matt, telling him that I remember being in, in wrestling school and watching. Matt and his brother Jeff, you know, win the tag team titles and become tag team champions and carry them. And to actually be standing with Matt Hardy, sharing the tag team titles, it was uh, just outstanding. But my, my series with Matt was, was challenging because Matt, Matt's a hell of a talent and he will push you. He really mm. makes you uh, bring your best every time. Mm. But we were fortunate because... <clears throat> Mr. McMahon allowed Matt and myself to uh, have a lot of input into the uh, the rivalry and the contests and, and, and the things that we were doing during that whole ordeal. So we uh, we were very fortunate that, you know, there was a time there when our angle was, you know, one of the most exciting parts of the show. So, mm. and, and being allowed to have say and to make suggestions, a lot of what you saw during that time between me and uh, between myself and Matt were uh, things that we came up with. And it's it's great when you get to see your ideas come to fruition. Mm, yeah, for sure. For sure. And when the people are so receptive to them as well. Yeah. Well, getting to host a talk show, and that's a pretty big deal for WWE. I mean, it's obvious that they're showing confidence in a great talker. How have you found the experience? Uh, fun would be an understatement. <laughs> uh, and it's funny because WWE Magazine, uh, one of the recent issues, uh, interviewed me and asked me about some of the other talk shows that are on the programming and, and some of the previous ones. And, you know, Piper's Pit was just... I remember when I watching it when I was younger. Yeah. Just thinking, man, that's absolutely outstanding. Yeah. Well, Piper was the man. I was oh, never yeah. a Hulkamaniac. I was always a Piper fan. <laughs> and um, as time went on, you know, there are other classics, but in recent memory, you know, the highlight reel with Chris Jericho and mm. Cutting Edge. Mm. You know, I, I watched these guys and, and and studied them, and you know, these are the the current greats. So to be able to have my own talk show and, and to actually have been on the cutting edge with Edge or to have had Chris Jericho as a guest at the VIP lounge. Mm. Um, these are just accomplishments that, that, that make me beam with pride. SummerSlam is the next really big pay-per-view coming up for WWE. And this was an event you didn't have a match in last year. What are you hoping for in this year's event? Uh, well, I'm always hoping to be... My goal is to always be the absolute best that I can be. And uh, I tell people all the time, it's my goal to be a multi-time world champion. So if uh, if if I had my druthers, I'd be uh, 
at SummerSlam getting a shot at the world title. Uh, we don't know because it's still a ways off, mm. but uh, I have every intention of having a, barring unforeseen circumstances, of course, I have every intention of having a very high-profile match at SummerSlam. Cool. What's something that fans would be surprised to learn about MVP? <sighs> There's so many things. <laughs> uh, it, it's funny because uh, there are things about me that people find out and they're surprised. Uh, you can't judge a book by its cover, and with me, that's that's especially true. For sure. Um, I'm a okay. Here, here's something I think is pretty good. Naturally, I, I, I love hip hop. I'm a big fan of rap music. Yeah. But a lot of people probably don't know that I also am a big fan of. Uh, hardcore uh, punk, hardcore, and uh, even a bit of metal. The uh, lead singer of uh, Kill Switch Engage, mm -hmm. they do uh, uh, CM Punk Century music, as a mm -hmm. matter of fact, yep. uh, is, is, is a friend of mine. We oh, all really? the time, yeah. And I really, really enjoy their music. Um, you know, some of my favorite bands are legendary American punk bands like Bad Brains, uh, I'm a huge fan of Fishbone, Red Hot Chili Peppers, music of that sort. So most people probably wouldn't guess that and would probably be surprised to find that out. <laughs> what does the future hold for MVP? Um, wow, the sky's the limit. Um, I'm really excited about the WWE film division and uh, I've been shouting to the rooftops about their ambitious goal of, of putting out two theatrical releases a year and four straight to DVD releases a year mm -hmm. and uh, um, it's a great opportunity for a lot of the WWE talent to uh, swim in different water so to yeah. speak and <clears throat> I recently had an opportunity to read for a part in one of their films and I uh, got very very good feedback so I think that uh, in the near future they'll probably be uh, some WWE feature films, if not featuring MVP, <laughs> definitely uh, having some MVP uh, content, if you will. That's exciting. All the best for that. Well, listen, MVP, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us, and um, all the best for tonight's show in Brisbane. Thank you very much. And uh, I, if you could tell your New Zealand fans, absolutely, hey, readers, I wasn't before a rugby league fan. Oh. But after having an opportunity to meet the Warriors and, and having a, a, I was so impressed with Ruben Wiki. And it, initially, I didn't uh, didn't know much about him and didn't know a whole lot about rugby league. But since I've been here, I've been watching the program quite a bit and uh, did a little research on Ruben Wiki. And what an amazing athlete. And, and just some of the things that I found out about him are just astounding. Yeah, yeah, so, he is. Uh, I guess it's safe to say that I guess it's safe to say that I'm a Warriors supporter now. Oh, excellent. And I will probably be following the team from here on out. So oh, That's great to hear. <laughs> oh, well, thanks again, MVP, and um, all the best for the future. Cheers. All the best. Okay, bye. Bye.